Hello, it's Mr. Schwanekamp. Today we are going to simplify rational expressions. So we're going to take this guy right here and we're going to make it a little bit cleaner. We're going to simplify and in that aspect it's going to help us to graph as well. Uh, so we'll kind of see what that looks like. Factoring is the main concept of the day. So if you're not great at factoring, you might need to go back and kind of spend some time factoring. Uh, we're going to start our lesson with some quick reminders. But if you're really far behind, uh, it might be something you need to spend some other time and look up another video on factoring. All right. So today, simplifying and then some basics of graphing. The good news is normally when we graph, you can use uh, Desmos or something to help you out if you need some help. All right. So let's get to it. You don't need to see me anymore. Here we go. We are going to start off by factoring. So I don't get super fancy with factoring. If you had me first semester, you know that for the most part, it's just uh, just understanding how this thing works. So a reminder that you look to see what multiplies to get num that number and then adds to get that number. So numbers that multiply to get 41, 1 and 42, 3 and 21, 3 and 14, and 6 and 7. And then two of those numbers need to add or subtract to get negative 11. So we picked 3 and 14 there because x minus 14 and x plus 3, if I were to take these two numbers and add them together, it gets me negative 11. And if I multiply them, it gets me 42. That's what we're trying to do. All right, so if you forgot, again, go watch some videos. I want to factor this guy. Boom, x, x. I need two numbers that multiply to get 21. So 7 and 3 and 21 and 1. One of those combinations needs to add to get 10. Yeah, we're going to pick 7 and 3. X plus 7, X plus 3. Because if I add these two numbers, it gets me 10. If I multiply those two numbers, it gets me 21. Factored. Done. Same thing on the next one. Two numbers that get me 35. Uh, 7 and 5, 35 and 1. One of them needs to add or subtract to get me 2 about plus 7 and minus 5, because 7 minus 5, if I add those together, it gets me 2. 7 times negative 5, that gets me negative 35. Boom, I have factored him. And again, I'll, I will put a video uh, in the class here if you need some more help. Uh, two numbers here need to multiply to get 27, so we're thinking like 27 and 1, or 9 and 3. How about x minus 9 and x minus 3? Add them together, negative 12. Multiplying them together gets me positive 27. Good. Factoring. Remember, uh, difference of squares. If you have a squared term but not an x term, we could factor this as well. So x squared minus 49, remember that's going to factor into x plus 7 and x minus 7. Because those two numbers multiply to get negative 49 and add to get 0 in the middle. Same thing here. x minus 2 x plus 2, that gets me negative 4, x minus 11, x plus 11. Just some difference of square stuff. Again, if you need more help with factoring, that's not what this lesson's about. You can go back and kind of review that on your own. What we are trying to do is simplify rational expressions. The number one mistake students make when they simplify ra rational expressions is they will go, ooh, there's an x squared, there's an x squared, they cancel. You cannot do that, all right? And my best example as to why, think of 2 plus 3 over 2 plus 5, right? If I did it the correct way, it'd be 5 sevenths, okay? That is not the same thing if I cancel these 2s and I get 3 fifths. 5 sevenths is not the same number as 3 fifths. They're similar. They are not the same, okay? You cannot do that. Don't get caught into this world that that is a real thing, okay? Uh, I have students in, in calculus that make that mistake. Don't make that mistake, all right? Instead, when we see a problem like this and we're trying to simplify, we need to factor the top and bottom and see what cancels. In order to cancel something here, when things are being added, you need to factor and then see what's exactly the same because we're going to cancel. All right, so if I look at number one, I'm going to factor the top and the bottom. So if I factor the top here, I'm going to get x plus 5 and x minus 2. And on bottom, I'm going to factor into x minus 4 and x minus 2. Again, if you're not great at factoring, spend some time on it. I might not say that anymore. Sorry, that's annoying. 
X minus 2 on top and bottom cancel. So what am I left with? Just X plus 5 and X minus 4. These are the same problem with this common denominator and numerator canceled out. That is how it simplifies. And then we're done. Next one. X plus 7 and X plus 1 on top. That's how it's going to factor. On bottom, I'm going to get X plus uh, 3 and X plus 1. I got an X plus 1 on top and bottom. Since they're exactly the same, I could cancel it. And so my final answer is X plus 7 over X plus 3. That's it. Nothing harder than that. It's factoring. If you know how to factor, these are easy problems. X plus 4, X minus 4. That's what X squared minus 16 factors into. On bottom, let's go with X plus 4 and X plus 3. X plus 4s are going to cancel. I'm left with X minus 4 over X plus 3. Done. Keep it rolling. X squared minus 4X minus 12 and X squared minus 11X plus 30. Factor that thing into X minus 6 and X plus 2. On bottom, I got X minus 6 and X minus 5. These two things cancel. That is my answer. X minus 5, X minus 1. X minus 5, and X plus 1. Those two things cancel. That is my answer. X squared plus 3X minus 54, so X plus 9, X minus 6. And then on bottom, it's a uh, difference of squares, so X plus 9 and X minus 9. These two things cancel. That is my answer. All right, why do we simplify these things? Because it's going to help us to understand what they look like. Okay, what does a graph of a rational function look like? Uh, let's pick one of these. So I'm going to pick this one right here because it's a fairly easy number. So x squared minus 6x plus 5. So I'm going to go to Desmos. x squared minus 6x plus 5. I'm going to close my parentheses there. So I'm going to put that top part in parentheses. And then I'm going to hit divided by. And on bottom, I'm graphing. Oh, that's not what I'm graphing. Where was that? There we go x squared minus 4x minus 5. Ah, I've got too many tabs open. Uh, x squared minus 4x minus 5. Here's what that graph looks like. All right. A lot of these graphs are going to look fairly similar to this. They aren't all going to look like that, but this is called a rational uh, graph. This is a rational expression. Rational is just a fancy word for fraction. All right. So we've got that right there. Cool. What did we get for a final answer, though? Oh, my gosh, I opened up the wrong tab again. Uh, we got x minus 6 over x minus 9. So let's look to see what happened there. x minus 6. No, that's not the right one. That's not what I... It was this one. x minus 1 and x plus 1. So x minus 1. Close my parentheses. Divided by x plus 1. Holy cow, look at that. They're the same graph. It's not going to let me tag it because it's right underneath my play button. All right, but you can see that where did that green graph go? It's right below it. You can't even see it because when I turn it on and off, it's underneath it. There it goes. You can see how it kind of changes colors a little bit, but they're the same graph. They're not exactly the same graph. They're pretty close. Look at what we got here, this x plus 1. All right. If I take that denominator and set it equal to 0, on bottom I'm going to get x is equal to negative 1. So basically I just changed the sign on the denominator. Look what happened on my graph. Look at this line that was created. See how this black line, and if I look at it close enough, I get really close to that black line. So I could keep going up here and zoom and zoom, zoom, zoom. Man, we get really close, but if I zoom in, I'm not really touching it. And I'm not really touching. I'm getting really close to it. I'm never going to touch that black line. Even when I zoom out here, it looks like I'm touching it. I'm not. Okay. I'm getting really, really close to it, but I'm not touching it. That is called a vertical asymptote. A vertical asymptote is an imaginary. An invisible might be a better word. It's invisible because it's not really going to be a part of my graph, but it's an invisible break or line in a graph where the graph line approaches 
but never touches it for a vertical asymptote. We're going to get really, really close to it, but we're never going to touch it. That is a vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptotes happen when the denominator is set equal to zero. So for example, in this one right here, we had a vertical asymptote at negative one. For this one right here, we'd have a vertical asymptote at five. On this one right here, we'd have a vertical asymptote at nine. So whatever the denominator can be set equal to, you're gonna have a vertical asymptote. Another thing can happen as well. We're gonna be able to find a hole. And so let's look back at this graph. I'm going to turn that graph off for a second. I'm looking at this green one, so my original one. And remember when I factored this thing, we had this X minus five that canceled out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to where X is equal to five. All right, so I'm gonna see on this graph, I'm going to trace my pen. So look here, you can see the X value. Let's zoom in. So I'm gonna zoom in, look at what happens when I get to five. And it's really hard to see sometimes. Ah, there it was, five. It says undefined. There is a hole in this graph, okay? There is a hole, and it's kind of hard to see, but right there, there's a hole. Why is there a hole? Well, what happens if I were to plug five into the top of this graph? If I plugged in five into this equation right here, I would get 25 minus 30 plus five. Well, 25 minus 30 would be five, negative five, plus five would get me zero. If I plugged in five on bottom, I would get 25 minus 20 minus five, or I would get zero. If I plug in five, I get zero in my denominator, and you cannot graph something if zero is in my denominator. So what ends up happening is you have a hole in your graph. So to find a hole, a rational function has a hole when there are the same factors in both the numerator and the denominator. That's why we cancel them out. We know there's gonna be a hole there, but it's not gonna change the picture very much. I spelled denominator wrong. There we go. All right, so let's look to see how this is gonna be. Find the vertical asymptote and then match it to the graph. I'm not making you match, we're gonna sketch it a little bit. So two and X minus two. To find a vertical asymptote, we're gonna set the bottom equal to zero and we're gonna solve. So we know that there's going to be a vertical asymptote at X is equal to two. Because if I plug two in the denominator, I'm gonna get zero. So if I go to this graph, I can put this vertical asymptote at two. There's that graph. Let's go ahead and type this in to decimals so we can see a better picture. Two divided by X minus two. Oh yeah, look at that. You got this vertical asymptote line right here at, yeah at two. We're getting close to two, but we're never going to touch it no matter what. So I'm going to sketch that picture pretty quickly. It looked down like this. We get close to that line, but never touch it. We're going to go up like that. We're going to get close to that line, but never touch it. There is a graph. Let's go to the next one. Three over x squared minus 16. Top is good. Let's take the bottom and set it equal to zero. So x is going to be equal to plus or minus four. So I'm going to have a vertical asymptote at positive and negative four. Let's draw those in. So I'm gonna have one asymptote line right there and another one right here at four. Let's see what this graph looks like. So I'm gonna go to Desmos and I'm typing in three divided by X squared minus 16. Whoa, look at that guy. You can see there's a line there at negative four and positive four that are splitting my graph. So what's happening? I got something like this. In the middle, I got this parabola shape that goes like that, and another one that goes like that. Is that the perfect graph? No, I'm just sketching them. But again, you can see those vertical asymptotes are taking place. Okay, let's get to number three. X squared plus X minus 12 over X minus three. Well, like we did earlier, let's factor that top part. So that top's gonna factor into X plus four and X minus three. And on bottom, I've got x minus 3. Uh-oh. x minus 3 on top and bottom, those are going to cancel. So nothing's going to be left in the denominator. So this graph is not going to have a vertical asymptote. But what it is going to have is it's going to have a hole at x equals 3. Because x minus 3 was a common factor that was on top and bottom. 
And so think about what's left over. All we're left with is x plus 4. So I could draw this graph without using Desmos. x plus 4 is a line. I'm going to be here at positive 4. I'm going to make a slope of 1. Up 1 over 1. Up 1 over 1. Up 1 over 1. Up down 1 over 1. Down 1 over 1. Down 1 over 1. Here's my graph. The only thing that's going to be a little bit different about this graph is I've got this nice little graph, but at 3, there is going to be a hole. So I'm going to draw in a little hole on my line at 3. Because if I plugged in 3 on top, I would get 0. If I plugged in 3 on bottom, I get 0. That's when a hole occurs. Okay, if you don't believe me, let's graph that thing. On top, we had x squared plus, what was it again? x minus 12. Close the parentheses, divided by x minus 3 on bottom. Yeah, it's just a line. Everything about it looks just like a line. The only difference is when I get here, ah, you can see it in there. It said undefined in there, I swear. All right, <laughs> you saw it. It jumps around on my screen like crazy. Uh, but that's what we're dealing with. Last one. All right, we got to factor both top and bottom, so x squared on top. So let's factor that into x minus uh, 4 and x plus 1 on top. On bottom, we're going to factor that into x minus 4 and x minus 1. So what's going to happen? Those are going to cancel. I'm going to have a vertical asymptote at x is equal to 1 because that thing right there is left over and if it's left over it's going to be a vertical asymptote but I'm going to have a hole at x is equal to 4 because that factor canceled out all right so let's draw that in at negative 1 I'm going to have this vertical asymptote line and at 4 I'm going to have a hole so let's graph this x squared minus 3x minus 4 on top minus 3x minus 4 let's see if I can do this from my memory I believe it was x squared minus 5x, minus 4 on bottom. Let's, oh, no, plus 4. Dang it, I was so close. Plus 4 on bottom, I was so close. Let's look at this picture, see if we're right. Oh, yeah, look, we got a vertical asymptote right there at 1. Did I draw it in the wrong spot? Oh, I'm a silly goose. x equals 1. I put it on the wrong side. Silly Mr. Schwanekamp. There we go, x equals 1. Uh, back to my graph. Looks like there's a horizontal asymptote, and we're not getting to that in this lesson yet, but it looks like there's a horizontal asymptote. See how there's a line right here at positive 1? That's kind of going through my graph. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that in my graph just because positive 1. I'm going to have this line kind of doing this, and this line kind of doing this. The only, ah, the only other thing that I could add to this graph is I know that there's going to be a hole right there at 4 because we had a factor of 4 on top and bottom. Let's just double check on Desmos, see if it agrees with me. Yep, undefined. Oh, you saw it that time. All right, you saw it. That's the main idea. Those are rational expressions. You can see what's happening. We factor, we cancel. If it's left in the denominator, it's going to be a vertical asymptote. If it cancels out of both, it's going to be a horizontal, or I'm sorry, a hole. Hope that helps. If not, ask some questions. Thanks, guys.